For this playthrough, I'll be running a Thorn build. But before we get into the run, I wanted to quickly mention that I'll be streaming the next run. I'll be trying to stream on Twitch, YouTube, and TikTok all at the same time, so if you're interested, go ahead and follow me there. Links are in the description. Anyways, back to the video. I tried to find something on a kind of thorn build or playthrough just using the thorn sorceries and I couldn't really find anything. It seems like the thorn sorceries are really only used in PvP for some niche builds. Other than that, I don't think they get any attention for a regular playthrough and that's probably for a good reason. That being said, it's a great opportunity to see how bad they can be. For this build, I'll be using weapons that are thorn related and possibly even flower like. Mainly I'm focusing on the two thorn sorceries, Vare's Bouquet and the Thorned Whip. If I find other weapons or items that I feel would also fit the build, I'll include them. Along with the weapons, I'm going to be using the Miranda Sprout Ashes. I think these summons fit the build and shouldn't be overpowered since they're just poison flowers. The goal of the run will obviously be to beat the game, but I also want to take out some of the major optional bosses as well, such as Moog and Melania. With the themes and rules laid out, let's get into the start of the run. Looking at my available options, the first thing I can grab is Briars of Sin. I need to travel all the way to Leonia first and take out a specific enemy. Once I get the spell, I need a way to use it. I don't have a staff or the required stats. This requires me to somehow get runes without killing any more enemies myself. I decided to go all the way to the south of Caelid where the mini war between soldiers and dogs was occurring. These enemies will fight each other on their own and I get the runes that they drop. This process required a lot of waiting around for the mobs to start dying. I'm positive there was a better way to get passive runes early, like farming the ball that rolls off the cliff, but I decided to go this route instead. After farming up enough runes to purchase a staff and leveling up the required stats for my first spell, I was finally able to attack enemies. Getting through this first section of the game is going to be awful. The spell locks you into place as you cast it and the animation is pretty slow. The damage output is also bad compared to the fact that you actually lose health when casting it. The triple cast gives the spell more range and damage, but that also means that you're stationary for a much longer time, and I don't see many boss fights that will allow that kind of time. I was struggling to fight even the simplest of bosses. I figured I needed more health, so I went to a random spot in Caelid where there were a lot of small enemies that could be taken out at the same time. After a few minutes of farming, I had a bit more health. I decided I could challenge Marget at this point. I fought this boss so much that I figured I wouldn't have much of an issue, but this spell makes everything worse. I died several times because I couldn't pick the right times to use my spell. I tried going the slow and steady route for a while, only using one or two bursts of the attack on the safest moves. I realized I needed to switch tactics, and instead of the slow start, I needed to burst as much health as I could in this first phase. I needed to actually proc blood loss, so instead of avoiding damage, I tried to stay close to him and use my spell even if I was going to get hit. I had to tank a few hits if I was going to cause big damage. Once that was done and he entered the second phase, I let the poison do a lot of the work. I didn't want to risk dying at this point, so I only attacked on moves I knew for certain were safe. Some more levels or a new weapon will be required if I plan on fighting Godric. Figured both of those could be done in one go. The next farming spot is located all the way over in Mount Galmere. I wanted to farm the witches in this area, not because of the runes they give, but instead for the weapon that they drop. I'm looking to grab the Staff of the Guilty, which only has about a 2% drop rate from the Thorn Sorcerers. This staff specifically boosts the power of the thorn sorceries, so I definitely need to get it. After about an hour of farming, the staff finally drops. With the new weapon and a few more levels, Godric can be challenged. Fighting Godric went a lot better than I was expecting. It only took me two attempts. I used my Miranda Sprouts as poison inflictors and as distractions, kinda. I just sort of circle around the summons until he is poisoned. Then it's time to start damage. Blood loss was caused pretty easily. The attacks he does either have a really long windup or I just end up tanking the hit. The start of the second phase is perfect for some easy damage. All I have to do is run straight at him and he'll stand there shooting fire over my head. The poison is still ticking and the goal was to cause blood loss at least one more time. Once that was done, I played a bit more cautious waiting for safer moves to counter attack. A few openings are found and Godric goes down. Definitely easier than the Margit fight. Next, I traveled to Vare in Liernia to progress the questline all the way up to fighting him in Mogun Palace. I tried fighting him, but with his added bleed weapon, I hemorrhaged pretty easily. The Macy drops can't even be used by my current stats, so instead of fighting him, I save him for later and head over to the boss that drops the first smithing stone bell bearing. 
After upgrading my staff a bit, I ran all around the map just taking out any bosses that seemed relatively easy. And when I say easy, I mean I wouldn't spend 30 minutes just fighting one boss. Most of the bosses that were targeted still gave me trouble, like the Red Wolf. Being limited to a stationary spell against a boss that is known for jumping wildly around the boss room doesn't make for the most enjoyable fight. I was able to take out about a third of his health before my summons finally poisoned him. From there, the poison and the extra thorn hits are enough to finish the fight. After fighting all of these bosses, I grabbed the second smithing stone bell bearing from the sealed tunnel in Alta's Plateau, upgraded my weapon, and traveled to the giant sleeping dragon for some more levels. The bleed in my build helps out with this kill a lot. Once the poison from my summons and all my FP was depleted, I was only left with my staff to do damage. Luckily, the staff has innate bleed, so after many, many hits, I can proc blood loss again. It took about six minutes to kill the dragon. Throughout the boss fights, I would sometimes take a break and try fighting Vare again, and each time I got clapped. I felt like I didn't have enough resources between my flasks to either keep myself alive or dish out enough damage. Eventually, after my boss rush, I acquired the magic damage boosting tier for my flask. This gave me a better edge against Vare. I had enough damage. However, it still wasn't enough because my positioning in the fight was bad. I kept trying to fight him straight up except for my initial attack. Every time I would start on the cliff looking over his spawn location and allow me to do damage to him directly under me. He usually tried to jump up to me, but that just means he's still within my attack. I figured I need to fight him like this the whole time, where he can't reach me with his attacks but I can still hit him. And I ended up finding a good spot to make that happen. There was a group of tombstones that he would try to attack me through, instead of going around. A smaller tombstone allowed me to jump on top, and from there I was able to attack Vade through the stones while keeping myself safe. Once he was finally dead, I grabbed another weapon for my build. I don't have the arcane to use the bouquet properly yet, and it shows. I tried to use it in some situations because it could still cause bleed, but the damage overall was garbage. The bouquet is supposed to be a joke weapon, and it's one of the worst weapons in the game, so I don't expect it to be strong. I don't have too many options at this point, so again I went around farming for runes and killing bosses until I had proper stats. Also went and grabbed another staff of the guilty. Both staffs in hand mean that I have more damage output from my thorn sorceries. Once the bouquet was usable, my view on the run changed. The experience was pretty miserable up to this point, but I was finally able to deal with bosses that were making me lose it. The damage was still god awful, but the build up of bleed was a lot quicker. With my improved weapon, I can challenge some more great room bosses, and I start with Renala. First phase is no problem with the bouquet. I had to break the shield a few times, but that wasn't a big deal. Second phase wasn't bad either, she staggers for most hits. The most annoying part was trying to reach her, because she either kept summoning or jumping away. After beating Renala, I went and grabbed a larval tier so I could redistribute some of my stats. I had several levels invested into intelligence, which was necessary for the first staff use, but not for my new ones. So all the levels in intelligence can be put in other stats like Vigor, Faith, and Arcane. Once that was done, I smacked around Grail for some runes and went to Radon. Radon took me about 5 attempts. I was glad that I was able to use my mace instead of having to rely on that slow spell. My preferred way of fighting him was jumping attacks. This was because I wanted to break his posture as much as possible. I tried the critical attack at first, but my damage was way lower than I was expecting. Instead, when his posture would break, I opted to use my Briar's Ascend spell because it offered more total damage. Everything was going pretty well up until the very end. It wouldn't be an interesting fight if I wasn't low health and no flasks left once again. I'm just going to let the rest of this fight play out so you might be able to feel the stress I had. Draconic Tree Sentinel was next on my list. I did so many times to this dude. I had the strat down quickly, but I just couldn't execute it well. Here was the plan. Sneak up behind him and get super close to him. Head and horse ass close. Next was to spawn my flower ashes to the left of him, and as I summon them, I repositioned to the right side of him. 
This was to prevent him from immediately jumping away from me. Then while my summons are hopefully poisoning him, I can get in a few Briars of Sin. And then from there, I pretty much exclusively use the mace. Jumping attacks were good because it would cause him to stagger more often. The hardest part of this fight was honestly just avoiding the attacks. I simply was doing a bad job of rolling out of the lightning and I wasn't timing my counter attacks well. I eventually got fed up with him and didn't feel like dying anymore. He got poisoned again towards the end so I decided to lay low while the poison did its magic. I snuck behind him again for one more hit. Once that boss was dead, I felt like it was a good time to do some scavenging. Went around grabbing more golden seeds and killing a few more random bosses. Then made my way over to the shaded castle to fight the briar boss. Weirdly, I have never fought this boss before in other playthroughs, so my first experience fighting him is with this build. It took me a while to get around his weird sword movement, but eventually I had a pretty easy solution. I would just attack his back, usually with jumping attacks. He seemed to always follow up with a shield slam, and the recovery on the attack is super slow. So rinse and repeat with a few reposts scattered in the fight, and the boss is dead. Now, I fought this boss for one reason, and that was so I could buy his armor. I added the gauntlets and boots to my fashion, and now when I roll into enemies, they take some damage. I then grabbed another fashion statement within the capital. The Alberic set increases the damage of my thorn sorceries, but I'll only be using the headpiece for now. The altered version as well, because the hat just doesn't fit. Golden Godfrey is not going to hemorrhage, so I have to take a weird and tedious approach to the fight. My mace barely does any damage on its own, so I need to use my spell instead. The problem with that is Godfrey's pretty aggro and he doesn't leave me a good opening to attack him if I also want to avoid taking damage. Well, except for one move. His axe move that he does just happens to be a great move to counter on. When he goes to retrieve his axe, he moves further than where the axe actually lands. This means as he's starting the animation to toss it, I can run backwards a few steps and start my spell cast. Briar's Ascent does have a short lingering hitbox, so when Godfrey's sliding towards me, he ends up in the range of my spell. This one move allows me to avoid damage and counterattack, so I abuse it for a pretty lengthy fight. I spend most of the time just trying to bait the move out by running away from him, then slowly closing the gap. Once Godfrey was taken care of, I wanted to upgrade my mace a little bit before fighting Morgoth. One of the faster somber smithing stones I needed to grab was after Godskin Noble in the Volcano Manor. This would also be decent practice before fighting the duo. Godskin Noble is very weak to hemorrhage, so the duo fight is looking pretty promising for this build. I still had some trouble because this boss is kind of cringe, but after a couple tries I was able to beat him. The fight was mostly jumping attacks and making use of the bouquet weapon art. Once my weapon is upgraded, I went to Morgoth. I attempted a couple times and honestly never really formulated a plan. I tried to bait him into my flowers first to start the poison. Once I was taken care of, I tried to do as many jumping attacks as I could, eventually causing hemorrhage and also stunning him. When the second phase started, I tried to play a lot more cautiously. Certain moves felt better to attack on, like the blood flame attack he does. There were still a lot of jumping attacks, and also when getting a critical, it was nice to do a wake up weapon art. Now with the mountaintop open up, I think the run should get easier. First stop on the mountaintop will be where my new spell sits. Briars of Punishment operates similar to Briars of Sin, but this version is a tracking spell with more range instead of being an AoE around the player. Also in this location, I'll be grabbing a new weapon. The large enemy here uses a thorn whip and has a chance to drop it. With my increased arcane and a foul foot, it didn't take long for it to drop. I finally have a weapon that can do some damage on its own without completely relying on a status buildup. Did some testing with my new whip on a couple bosses, and it seems like it'll be fine for the rest of the game. The real challenge will be Fire Giant, and a challenge he was. Died quite a few times here. I felt like a little ankle biter with the lack of damage I was doing. Originally I had went with the mace. Wanted to really focus on status proc instead of primary damage, but I changed my mind. The mace is really good for making the red liquid come out, but its base damage is bad. Combined with Fire Giant's resistances, it seemed better to just use the whip. The whip has more base damage and will still cause hemorrhaging. I stayed on my horse for a majority of the fight, chipping away at his ankle. Eventually was able to get him to half health and start the next phase. While he's spewing rocks, I use a couple briars of punishment. But then for the rest of the fight, I get in a few hits on his arms when I can, but for the most part I'm stuck whipping his heel. I preferred to stay directly behind him so I could avoid getting caught up in his stupid rolling. 
This was a super long process, and dying usually meant another 8 minute fight. After Fire Giant, I realized I had forgotten about the last piece of armor I needed for my fashion. So I went back to the capital for the deathbed dress. I kind of wish I was streaming this playthrough so I could show you all how awful I felt while fighting the Godskin duo. But I'm also glad I wasn't streaming because I would not be able to keep my composure. This fight is absolutely awful. When watching boss ranking videos, Godskin duo always seems to be considered the worst boss fight in the game. But I think somewhere in my head, for some reason, I wanted to somewhat like them. But thinking about them now, I think it's just the music I like. They are just two bosses that are thrown into a room that don't work well together. The build I have is great for blood loss. The bosses are so weak to it that it should be a pretty easy fight. But that little weakness cannot overcome the input reading, double aggro, meat grinding, infinite respawning hell that is this fight. Focusing on the big one was the goal the entire time. I have more practice with him and I just think that his moves are easier to deal with. Well all except one. Flower Ashes are summoned at the start for quick poison. The fight overall is very long, so getting both of the bosses poisoned at least once is helpful. I would also position close to my summons and get in a couple thorn spells. If the big one shot a fireball at me, my summons would take the hit instead. Next I switch to my bouquet and try to cause a lot of hemorrhaging. It only takes a couple of hits in the beginning to do huge damage. I could get the big one to half health with little to no damage taken. From there though, the fight goes downhill quickly. One of the moves I was having a difficult time dodging was the boss's rolling move. Sometimes I would be in a good position, or at the very least, be prepared to deal with it, usually by running straight right or left, or using the pillars to block. The thing is, consistency is not strong with this boss. Sometimes he would just roll over the pillar I was using as my escape. Sometimes he would double tap me. And other times he would just hit me against a wall where all I can do is wait to die. When I could survive on the pillar, I would switch to Briars of Sin and comfortably use the full triple cast. Eventually when Big Boy dies, I would try to finish off the small one before he resummoned. I don't like fighting the small one, so I would only try this if the small one was already almost half health from the poison. Don't want to get stuck with a phase 2 skinny boy while Big Man's up. I think all of this fight is bullshit, but I can still chalk it up as being my fault for not dodging perfectly or not having good positioning. At least that's what I thought until this happened. This was some grade A garbage, and it happened to me twice. This was my breaking point, and I called it quits for the day. Picked it up the next day optimistic. It took me about 30 minutes until I tasted success. I grinded a few more levels, but other than that, I didn't actually change my strategy. In the beginning, it was mace usage until Noble was dead. Then I pretty much melted the Apostle. I tried to do a ton of damage before the other could be revived, but I noticed at this point, they were becoming a lot harder to bleed. So it was time for a strat change. I switched my whip and spent the rest of the fight, over 10 minutes, slowly chipping away at Noble on moves I deem safe. And then for another installment of one shot left and no flasks, I used Briars of Punishment to finish the fight. When I got to Malekith, I knew hitting the dude was going to be the hardest part. I went in thinking that the mace was going to be my go-to weapon, but as I went through a few attempts, I started to notice something. Even though Malekith is strong versus Hemorrhage, the mace applies so much buildup that it shouldn't matter. The problem is the time gap between when I'm doing damage. He doesn't give me a lot of openings to attack, so the time frame between when I get my hits in is too long. This pretty much means that the buildup is decreasing more than I can increase it. 
With that in mind, I decided to switch the mace and instead just use my spells and my whip. For the first phase, I start with my flower summons, and if he doesn't instantly charge me, I can get a spell cast off. Once I get out of that starting death trap area, I focus on accomplishing two things. First is getting him around my flowers so they can poison him. The next is positioning myself around the pillars, not just to avoid damage, but also so I can deal damage. I could get it just right where some of his attacks would crash against the pillars, but mine would just kind of narrowly go around the pillars and still reach him. Second phase required a completely different strat. I kept trying to get him around my flowers again for another poison, but it wasn't really working for me. So I forgot about the poison and focused on counterattacks with my whip. The best move I could bait out was the one where he does a spin in the air and slams down his sword for a flurry of attacks. I could roll into him and charge up a heavy attack that would always hit. The other attack is after the projectiles that he throws. When he comes flying in, he would sometimes be close enough for a single hit. I repeated attacking on these couple of moves the entire second phase. Once I figured the strat out, this fight wasn't actually that bad, surprisingly. On the other hand though, I kinda hate to say this, but I was getting tossed by Gideon. I really wanted to kill him with spells, and I think that made the fight worse. I used my flowers of course, and tried to use my spells when he was distracted by my flowers. There was zero planning for this fight, and it was pretty sloppy, but oh well. I needed to prep for fighting some of the hardest endgame bosses all in a row. Had to get to the Halic Tree roots, so that means taking out Commander Nile and Loretta. Both of these bosses were taken care of without much issue. For Nile, his minions were killed quickly, and he gives large openings for me to use Briars of Punishment. His slow walk towards me is a great opportunity, as well as whenever he slams his staff in the ground. Once I dealt with Nile, I had a similar type of fight with Loretta. She didn't have as many openings, but still provided a safe one whenever she would summon her glint blades. I still tried attacking on other moves and was usually punished for doing so. The best damage though was whenever my summons would hit her. She'd be distracted a bit giving me a decent window to spam spells. I started to choke at the end and took some of Loretta's arrows to the face. Then I got caught in a roll. She could have coughed on me and I would have died. I definitely couldn't use my spell anymore because I would just be ending myself. I just needed to finish the fight with my whip. Once I made it all the way to the roots, I went back to Mogwin Palace. I don't fight Moog much, so it's always a bad time when I do. The first phase was actually incredibly easy. I would always start the attempt by summoning my flowers, drinking my flask to negate the boss's attack, and running back toward the entrance. Then I was usually able to start spamming spells with almost zero interference. My flowers would not only poison him, but they would also act as a roadblock. He would just keep trying to walk toward me without realizing that there was something in the way. Then as he starts going to his next phase, I switched to my mace and spammed its skill, trying to cause as much build up as I could. For being the Lord of Blood, he's not very resistant to hemorrhaging. Getting to this point was always stupid easy, so it shows how little I fight him because it took a total of 50 minutes of attempts to finally beat him. Second phase was when the trouble started, and I went back and forth on how I should fight him. I continued using my spells, but kept dying. Because he's so aggro, I tried using melee for a bit, but then that wasn't working either, so I switched back to just using my spells. I spent a lot of time running away from him. I really only attacked when he would slow walk to me, and only if I was at a good distance. Had one surviving flower for a while, and I would try to get Moog caught on him, giving me a safer window to attack. I think the difficulty of the second phase makes up for the ease of the first. As clear as day. With the few bosses that are left, I made an assessment. So here's what I thought about. Godfrey does not hemorrhage easily. Melania, I doubt I would be using my mace. And Radagon and Elden Beast are immune to hemorrhage. At this point, I figured it was time to drop the bouquet. It had served its purpose up to this point, and I couldn't see it being needed anymore for the run. So I went to the Rune Baron Limgrave for a quick larval tier and respect my points. Because I don't need to worry about bleed much, and the mace won't be used anymore, I was able to basically switch all the points that I had in Arcane and redistribute them to Faith and Dex. Now my main damage source is just my spells and my whip. With this change, I go to Godfrey. Starting off, I do the exact same thing I did for Moog. Some of my flowers, run back and drink my juice, and then start spamming spells as he tries to get through the roadblock. I can do about 4k damage before he finally gets through. 
bring him around my flowers one more time so he gets poisoned. He then gets like half health before he even starts slamming the whole arena. Then for the entirety of Horlu, I attack on only one move. When he jumps in the air and slams down for his huge AoE attack. This is really the only safe move I could use my spell on. I don't have a ton of experience fighting him with melee, and when I do, the fight makes me mad. So I went for the safe method instead. It was time for me to head back to the Halleck Tree and challenge Melania. It's crazy to say this, but the fight was actually not hard. Somehow these garbage spells make the first phase an absolute breeze. So much so that I didn't get hit. She doesn't detect that the spell is coming at her, so she doesn't jump out of the way. I can create a large distance between us and use Briars of Punishment as she slowly walks towards me. If there's still distance between us after she dashes out of the way, I can use the spell again. Rinse and repeat this for the whole first phase. Only move I need to worry about for this part is her waterfowl dance, but I've done this fight so much that it doesn't worry me anymore. The second phase turned it up a little bit. The starting Scarlet Aeonia lets me get in like 2k more damage. Then from there I have a few options for dealing damage. First is when she slams down to create a Scarlet Geyser. And then whenever she slowly walks to me, kinda like the first phase but she barely does this, usually opting to rush me down instead. Another is when she uses her Scarlet Soldiers. If I'm far enough away I know her dash won't reach me, so I can start casting the spell as she comes in. Last is whenever she starts using her Scarlet Aeonia again. This is easily the best move to attack her on. There was still a decent amount of time spent trying to bait out these options, but with all the options that I had, it went a lot better than I was expecting. Extraordinary. It's finally time to end this run. I actually had a lot of trouble with this fight. I had like two hours of attempts. I couldn't really decide if I wanted to fight Elden Beast with my spells or with my whip. It took about an hour before it made sense for me to use both methods. I used my flowers for Radagon since he could still be poisoned, unlike Elden Beast. Radagon would take a nice chunk of damage from my spells, the issue was finding an opening to use them. Based solely on his moves, I could really only damage him when I was far enough away from any of his hammer smashes, as well as whenever he does his large AoE attack. Other than that, I was trying to get him hit by my flowers the whole fight, which was the most annoying thing to try to do. By the time he would be right up next to my flowers, he would start throwing a, another holy lightning at me. When he did turn his attention towards one of them, I had the best opportunity to damage him. The goal was to get through this part of the final fight using only about one or two healing flasks. Wanted to make sure I was super healthy for Elden Beast. For Elden Beast, I tried to stay aggro in the beginning. First breath attack is easy damage, but then I try to stay close to him and keep whipping the shit out of him. I was able to keep doing this for about half of his health. Then he started to try some more ranged attacks. My favorite being the holy slashes. Move is super easy for me to dodge, and at the end I have enough time to use my spell twice. From here it was just rotating weapons. If I had an opening for an attack but wasn't close enough, I would use my spell. Otherwise, I was right up next to him using my whip. And with that, the hardest build I've done so far comes to a close. I ended this build at level 134. Overall, this was the most challenging build I've done so far. The beginning was the worst part of the run. Being limited to only Briar's Ascend makes for some super hard fights. The run does get better the further you get in the game, especially after you get to the mountaintops, mainly to having access to another spell and a whole nother weapon. The bouquet was nice for bleed status, but its overall damage was awful. Also the flower summons were trash. Being able to poison a boss is super helpful and makes for a much easier fight, but other than the poison, the flowers were just too derpy and unreliable. I had to do most of the work by getting the boss around the flowers. Many times I was hoping that they would hit the boss to pull aggro, but they rarely did. Instead, they just wiggle to the bosses before taking 15 seconds to charge an attack, which by then the boss is out of range. Millennia was probably the most surprising fight. Hopefully even a new option is available if you find yourself struggling with her. 
Now, there was a change that came out recently. Patch 1.07, which buffed Thorn Sorceries and buffed Blood Tax, which is the weapon art of the bouquet, among many other changes. What sucks is I was already at Elden Beast when this change came through, so I didn't get a benefit from it. That being said though, if you want to use those spells, they should be better than what's shown in the video. I know this video took a while to get out, but I plan on getting videos done quicker now. Had vacation, work travel, and was sick all in the last month. Hopefully with all that out of the way, I can get videos out a bit faster. As mentioned in the beginning of the video, for the next build, I plan on streaming it, so if you're interested in viewing the run as it happens, I'd love to see you all in chat. Thanks for watching.